Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, or sometimes referred to as just Laugh-In, was an American sketch comedy television program that ran for a total of 140 episodes from January of 1968 to March of 1973 on NBC. It was hosted by comedians Dan Rowan and Dick Martin. It originally aired just as a one-time special on September 9, 1967, but was so popular with audiences that it was brought back as a series. It replaced The Man from UNCLE on Mondays at 8 p.m. It quickly became one of the most popular television shows in the U.S. The title of the show comes from a play on the 1960s hippie culture of love-ins or maybe even sit-ins that were commonly associated with the protest of that age. During the pilot episode, Dan Rowan explained the show's approach. He stated, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to television's first laugh-in. He said that for the past few years, everyone had been hearing an awful lot about the various ends that were happening, whether it be a love-in or a sleep-in, and that this was a complete laugh-in. He also reminded them that laugh-in is a frame of mind, and that for the next hour, he would like the audience just to sit back and laugh and forget about all the other ends that were so rampant during that time. The good-natured, light-hearted, informal disposition of the show was thereby established. It had its roots in the humor of vaudeville and burlesque, but its most direct influences were Olson and Johnson comedies, plus the innovative television works of Ernie Kovacs. The series was characterized by a rapid-fire series of gags and sketches, many of which were politically charged or contained sexual innuendo. The co-host continued the exacerbated straight man Rowan and the dumb guy Martin act, which they had established already as nightclub comics. It featured Gary Owens as the on-screen announcer and an ensemble cast. Ruth Buzzy was part of the cast throughout the show's six-year run, along with names like Judy Carn, Henry Gibson, Goldie Hawn, Artie Johnson, Joanne Worley, Lily Tomlin, Dennis Allen, and Richard Dawson. It was all designed to be very lightly structured and consist mainly of short comedic sketches. Some of these would reappear multiple times throughout an episode with variations on the theme, while others involved recurring characters created by the cast. In other parts, cast members and guest stars would simply appear as themselves, delivering jokes or reacting to a previous sketch. The show would start with a batch of sketches leading into Gary Owens' introduction segment, in which the cast and the announced guest stars would appear behind open doors of the show's iconic, psychedelically painted joke wall. Owens would insert offbeat lines into his monotone, deadpan style into the introductions and occasionally throughout the episode, generally facing a microphone to his side with one hand cupped over his ear. After more short sketches, Leading into and out of the first commercial break, Rowan and Martin would walk in front of the show's home base set to introduce the show and have a dialogue, which generally consisted of Martin frustrating Rowan by derailing his attempt to do a proper introduction via misunderstandings or digressions. The producer was a guy named George Shatler, and his wife is the one that came up with the idea for Socket To Me, which was a big part of the show. She liked this after listening to Aretha Franklin's song Respect, and she told her husband that she thought it would be a good bit for the show. George Shatler 
didn't produce the final season of the series, but he won the rights to those episodes in a court battle. For many years, he neither allowed those episodes to be re-aired nor any clips to be included in retrospectives of the show. But on March 13, 2017, Decades TV was allowed to begin airing that final season. The turnover rate was really high on the show, so much so that only four regulars remained on the show throughout its entire run. The two hosts, Gary Owens and Ruth Buzzy. Several of the reports from Dan Rowan's News of the Future segments came to fruition years later. Notably among them was Ronald Reagan's presidency. He at the time was governor of California during the original airing of the show. Also in this category was the fall of the Berlin Wall. One of the trademarks of the series was the fast cutting that happened in between videotape segments. Blackouts, one-liners, and sketches were edited together in such a way that the show had a very rapid, almost frenzied pace. This was all done before computer-controlled editing machines were invented, so the show was edited entirely by hand. Both front-running candidates of the 1968 presidential election were invited to make cameo appearances on the show just before the general election. Former VP Richard Nixon accepted, though sitting VP Hubert H. Humphrey declined. Many have credited Nixon's appearance with helping him win that election. Now we mentioned earlier how Gary Owens created his trademark cupped hand over the year bit, but the real way that got started was at lunch at a smokehouse restaurant in Burbank. Among the attendees were one of the writers and the producer of the show. Owens was in the men's restroom with the producer, Shatler, when he and Jest cupped his hand over his ear in the manner of 40s radio announcers, commenting on the remarkable acoustics of the men's room. He had never used this manner before, but he did incorporate beautiful downtown Burbank into his lines. The producer just absolutely loved the absurdity of the cupped hand, and he told Owens to use that on the show. This ended up being one of the most remembered parts of the series. Catch an episode of this show if you want to be transported back to the 60s again. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.